Friends, today is the 27th of July, and I'm going to read from Exodus 32. We're going to continue on verses 11 through 14 on this Wednesday. We've been looking at what it means to be uh, empathetic and directional, directional empathy or directed empathy. What does that mean for us as leaders? All right, Exodus 32, 11 through 14. This is the uh, action of Moses after the sacrifice of the uh, golden calf at the foot of the mountain. The Lord said to Moses, uh, I've seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. And uh, Moses implored the Lord and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that God brought them out to kill them in the mountains, to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I promised I'll give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I wonder if I would ask you today, where does empathy come from? I'm going to take a stab at answering that. Empathy is a product of insight and attitude. It's formed by experience, but also by imagination. So we need, on the one hand, to understand what's going on with people. We need to form an attitude to that. Not just be reactive, but choose an attitude, a stance to take about the problem that we see, that our insight shows us. And the capacity to have the insight and to, to take the right attitude is formed by both our experience that we've had and our imaginative capacity. Let's take Moses as an example. Moses had empathy for the waywardness of the Israelites. Why was that? Well, his experience on the run without a, a, a clan or a setting reinforced for him the fear the Israelites had in being without a territory or a settled situation. It's hard to come out, it's hard to live. Uh, it's one thing to go you know, on holiday in a, in a caravan uh, or as the English call it, or a Winnebago, or, or a trailer. Uh, it's another thing to just to live like that, to be going from place to place to place. And the Israelites were in that situation, living in tents. The, the, the geography looked different every day. Uh, the problems of survival looked the same every day. There wasn't much security. And so um, it, it, Moses knew what that was like. He'd had a taste of that when he was on the run from Egypt. It's a fearsome thing. That created some empathy for him. Secondly, I think as a parent, a father, he understood the way parents become risk averse. You know, it's one thing when you're responsible only for yourself. Um, you know, I kind of did some willy-nilly traveling as a kid. I did hitchhiking. I don't know about you, but in the year I grew up, hitchhiking wasn't a big deal. I used to hitchhike all over the tri-state area, in New York to Philadelphia, um, Washington, D.C., so um, would I do that with my family? I wouldn't. I mean, once you have a family, you become more protective and more risk averse. Uh, so this is a natural thing, uh, given the vulnerability of children and the amount of care that they need. And so again, the, the reaction of the Israelites to, uh, to, to turn toward something that was familiar and to be scared about embracing this journey and this new identity. There's a kind of naturalness to that. But also, I think, and this Moses had to do imaginatively, he had to imagine the impact of slavery on the Hebrews. Because slavery itself creates dependence and fear. You know, generations of slavery have a real impact on the way people see themselves and the way they see the world. They are disempowering. They they create a feeling, uh, you know, feelings of unworthiness and incapacity, and that too means that uh, might have been behind this reversion, this terribly fast reversion away from God toward the familiar gods of Egypt. Um, and so, what Moses did was he advocated for Israel before God. He pled for a second chance and later a third chance. 
despite their unfaithfulness and their resistance. Moses knew, because of his empathy, it was harder to get Egypt out of the Israelites than to get the Israelites out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, are you, uh, you want us to be empathetic leaders, and uh, we ask ourselves that question today. Am I an empathetic leader? And we should look at our lives today and, and wonder what experiences have helped us to become more empathetic. And we ask you today for a greater empathy, a greater understanding. Help us to have both insight and control of our attitude when we see waywardness. And we know you've, you've helped us in some ways with our experience, but also give us imagination to put ourselves in other places, even if we haven't had a direct experience of what they've gone through. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.